So another thing that happens is that often matrices have special structure. Matrices with special structure that we discussed last week were triangular matrices and symmetric matrices. Again, computational scientists are concerned about two things. One is performance, the other one is space. So, if your matrix is triangular, then there are a lot of zeros in that matrix. You don't want to compute with those zeros if you don't have to, because it takes time to compute with those zeros. A couple of units ago, we looked at how to reformulate matrix vector multiplication, marching through the matrix in a way that exposes quadrants instead of one row or one column at a time. Let's see how we can now use this to implement a triangular matrix vector multiplication algorithm. On the left, we had the algorithm for matrix vector multiplication that marched through the matrix by rows, which meant that we did dot products with rows in the vector x. On the right, we have the same algorithm, except that the row now is exposed as different pieces, and as a result, we end up with two dot products, a scalar multiplication, added to the current element of y. Okay, now what if matrix A is a triangular matrix? And we're going to discuss the case where matrix A is an upper triangular matrix, so I'm going to change the symbol I use for A to U. So as the algorithm marches through the matrix, we end up exposing different pieces of U in this fashion. And if we now look at a typical row in U, notice that that's partitioned as such. And notice that therefore you end up doing this dot product with that part of X, this scalar multiplication, and then another dot product of this part of the row with this part of X. And that's all written down right here. The important part is that the way we march through the matrix, it is always the case that this first term equals zero, because it's zero times this first element plus zero times this second element. And therefore, we don't need to do that computation at all. And that means that we perform fewer floating point operations. Okay, so how does this then change our algorithm? Well, by now you may have noticed that I really like to use symbols in a way that conve helps convey the story. So the first thing that I want to do is replace my A with U everywhere in this algorithm. So it's exactly the same algorithm as before, performing matrix vector multiplication, partitioning through the matrices, and recall that inherently at the current iteration, what we do is we dot product of these parts of matrix U with x partitioned as such. Now, if we did all of these computations, we would end up doing this right here. But what we just argued is that this part is always equal to zero, and therefore we don't need to do it. And that saves us computation. Actually, it goes beyond that. It is quite often the case that when we have a matrix, the upper triangular part stores some upper triangular matrix, and the lower triangular part stores some other data that is also important. So there aren't even any zeros there, and therefore if you did this computation, you would end up using a row vector that is not zero, and you would even change the entire result of the computation. What does this mean about the cost? Well, let's have a look here. Let's look at this algorithm, and let's clean it up just a little bit. Notice that the algorithm marches through matrix U, expanding the size of this top left quadrant, so that at the current iteration we can say that this submatrix is K by K. And notice that we do this for K equals zero, because initially U top left is empty. And we finish when K is equal to N minus one, where N is the size of matrix U. So let's take that inside over here, and let's say that this here is k by k. Notice that this column has width 1. This row has height 1, size 1. And then this right here is n minus k minus 1 in row size. 
And this right here is n minus k minus 1 in column size. Now, recall, we don't perform this computation. So what we really are doing is one scalar multiplication, one inner product adding to a result. Now, what is the cost of that inner product? Well, the cost of an inner product with vectors of size n is 2n. But what are the sizes of these vectors? The sizes of these vectors are the width of this right here which is n minus k minus 1, and therefore we perform this many floating point operations. And then we perform another addition as well. So really we do 2 plus 2 times the quantity n minus k minus 1 floating point operations. And we must do this for k equals 0 to n minus 1 because we perform these operations every time we go through the loop and every time through the loop this size k here changes. So this is actually the cost. Well we can also write this as the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 and notice that we can have this offset that so we get 2 times n minus k and then we know that we can bring this 2 outside, so we get 2 times the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 of n minus k. Okay, but what does that equal? Well, it's 2 times the quantity. When k is equal to 0, we get n. When k is equal to 1, we get n minus 1, and so forth. And finally, when k is equal to n minus 1, we get 1. So that's just 2 times the sum from j equals 0, sorry, equal 1 to n of j. But this is something that we saw in week number 2. That there equals n times n plus 1 over 2, which we must multiply by 2. And what we notice is that a triangular matrix vector multiply requires n times n plus 1 floating point operations. Had we not taken advantage of the fact that this was a triangular matrix, it would have been 2 times n squared, because the matrix would have been square, n by n, a matrix vector multiply requires 2 times m times n floating point operations. m is equal to n, so we end up with 2 times n squared. The cost now of performing a triangular matrix vector multiply, if we take advantage of the fact that there are zeros sitting there, is roughly half as much as when if you did not take advantage of those zeros. What that means is that you will complete your triangular matrix vector multiply roughly twice as fast, and that's a good thing. We could look at an alternative AXP-based algorithm. And notice if you did an AXP-based algorithm, then you would be doing this column times that scalar to add to whatever is currently in the vector. But notice that that's broken down into AXPs with these separate parts. That's written out right here. And notice that this part is always a zero vector, and therefore you conclude that you don't need to do that computation at all. So the algorithm then again starts with the algorithm that was XB based, but now marched through the matrix in quadrants as such. We change that algorithm to use the letter U instead of the letter A. And then all we do is we say, oh, this part we don't even need to do, and we end up with an algorithm that performs a matrix vector multiply with an upper triangular matrix using XPs. Now, you can do a cost analysis. Again, what do we do? We say, this is k by k, this is 1, and this is n minus k minus 1 n minus k minus 1. 
this operation is not performed. This is an XP, but it's an XP with this vector right here, which is of size K. So this takes two K floating point operations because that's the cost of an XP operation with vectors of length K. This takes two operations. You must do that for K equals zero to N minus one because this matrix here changes from a zero by zero matrix to an N minus one by N minus one matrix in the last iteration. And you can write that as two times the summation of k equals 0 to n minus 1 of k plus 1. But that equals 2 times the sum from k equals 1 to n of k. That's moving this plus 1 into the range over which we sum. And again, in week number 2, we saw that the sum from k equals 1 to n of k it's just 2 times n times n plus 1 over 2. And then these 2's cancel each other. And you're left with exactly the same number of floating point operations for the XP-based algorithm as you did for the dot product-based algorithm. So now you have learned how to take advantage of special structure to reduce the number of floating point operations that you performed by a factor 2.